Konami, Konami, Konami. So, earlier this week, according to uh, an article that was sent to me by Singularity Josh, um, who, by the way, if, if you're not aware, obviously, like myself, has taken an accidental, accidentally long hiatus, life and things, it all gets in the way, it's a, it's a horrendous business, is life, and, uh, but, have no fear, he's back, uh, not in the form of YouTube, but in the form of live streams. So if you want to go see him live stream, he's doing a lot of Destiny at the moment. So if you want to go see that, go go to his channel. The link's down below and stuff. But anyway, he he linked me to an IGN article. Uh, so sort of take that how you will. But they apparently are basically reporting on a uh, Kotaku article. <laughs> so great journalism there, IGN. So basically, we've kind of found out a little bit more about the whole Konami, Kojima... Konami Kojima thing. As we were all... I mean, let's be honest, we pretty much knew this earlier this year. It's just Konami being Konami thought that they'd be like, oh no, it's fine. Everyone will believe us, won't they? Yeah, Konami, sure, we'll believe you. And basically, Kojima has left. He has left Konami. He is no longer with them. He is no longer a part or associated... With a company he's been with, I think, since 1989 or 1988. That's a damn long time. And, and, and all that time, he's, I think, solely been doing uh, Metal Gear, which is obviously his, his baby child, his, his, his produce. I don't, think, I don't think he's much been involved as heavily in anything else apart from the Metal Gear franchise. But now, obviously, Metal Gear 5 has been released and it's all very good and reviewed very well and wonderful. There's kind of been a been a huge, huge shift, and it is you know the the way Konami have kind of dealt with it is in like oh you know it's fine like we're we're still buds you know we're, we're still buds we're still friends There's no no animosity between us. I mean we'll probably never know the full picture, the full picture, but I suppose we can guess from from what we know. Obviously last couple of years and i think really that this is a lot of japanese companies nowadays are getting heavily into the the mobile gaming market just simply because mobile gaming in japan is so big so horrendously big and it's more popular over there than it is over here and i think it will always always will be that the handhelds and mobile devices are very commonplace to to do your gaming in Japan, whereas over here, over here, the sort of Western world, we, we 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 prefer. I mean, I don't even dabble with mobile gaming, not anymore. I mean, my phone, my phone is like three, four generations of iPhone past. Like, it, 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 nothing runs on it now, so it's pointless anyway. But the the only sort of mobile, I suppose, as it were, gaming I get involved in is my 3DS, and even then, I I don't play it that much or that often. I can't can't really remember. I think I, the last time I played it was before summer. So that's a, that's a fairly long time ago. Predominantly, we are console and PC gamers. That's that's predominantly how how we game, and that's that's what's successful, I suppose, in Western regions. But in Japan, game companies, especially the big ones, they can make a lot of money really without spending a lot of money on making and developing a game on a mobile game, and either creating the mobile game and selling that, and then then obviously you've got your your online shops and your stores and things like that where you can buff out you know, throw out DLC and god knows what else all these sort of pay to win mobile phone games that that, that are so surprisingly successful and really as we know as well that's mainly what Konami are deciding to focus on so and and it's even more evident now that they've gotten rid of Kojima and Kojima Productions, which who really, let's be honest, is was a powerhouse for Konami. Anything Kojima touched was, you know, almost godly in the world of video games. I mean, if if there if there is such a thing as rock stars in the video game world, Kojima would be one of them, hands down, probably one of the top five, if anything. Of, of of video game rock stars, he's got that sort of status and that sort of that presence and 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 track record behind him, where he's made innovation after innovation after innovation, and it's clear to see every Metal Gear game's got better and better and more amazing and critically acclaimed and all that, and 
the amount of money they must have spent on Metal Gear Solid Five is just is just horrendous. And to a degree, you can see from maybe Konami's point of view, Kojima has cost us a lot of money. You know, it's not necessarily financially viable for them to maybe make these blockbuster games all the damn time, and it might just be easier and more money efficient for them to be creating and getting getting engaged and solely being part of the mobile market, which to a degree you can understand. It's big in Japan, and it's a lot easier for them to sell in their own country than it is to to promote to the West. Obviously, as we saw, especially last generation. And maybe to a degree the PS2 era as well, that that sort of console generation, where JRPGs especially fell behind. As we all know, PS1 era was the golden age for JRPGs and Japanese-made games. They were coming out of everywhere and they were doing so well, probably since the, 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 the phenomenal success of Final Fantasy VII. Square made horrendous amounts of money from it. And But as the years have gone by, especially last gen, we saw a, a massive detraction from JRPGs and, and and things like that, Japanese-made games, sort of coming over to the West and making it big, which, you know, for, from... And it's difficult to promote it sometimes. You've got to think the amount of work that goes into these... Trans, they get it translated and they have to do all sorts of business to try and make sure that it sells. And sometimes, I suppose, it's not financially viable, especially, you know, JRPGs are quite a, quite a, a niche... A, a niche genre of gaming especially when as we know you know and it what's clear sells in the west which is i suppose games like call of duty and assassin's creed and fifa and things like that are probably some of the most popular games sold to the west to, to, to the western western countries so i suppose it's a little bit daunting and most japanese companies especially with the way that the way they are that they they're almost quite old-fashioned and not quite up to date as I suppose Western developers are in some respects, and in many ways as well, some of their their decisions around their company are very choice and a bit. I suppose to us it's odd, but in the same way we've got stuff that they probably think is odd and why we do that. But for example, companies like Konami, if they and they have done this to people, and and maybe to a degree they did this to Kojima as well, that if they think you're you've run your usefulness and and literally quote unquote you are useless within the company no matter what position you hold or have held they demote you and do something to i I suppose either try and make you quit or just so you're not costing them as much money so for example it's happened to lead developers and game designers in konami that they've been demoted to be like security guards cleaners all sorts of bit which to us is i suppose like what is going on how is that even possible why is that a thing how can you do that but i suppose it, it's it's perfectly normal in in sort of japanese business culture and things like that i guess but to a degree i suppose a similar things happened to to kojima where earlier this year we suddenly just saw his name dropped and erased from everything and they were just ignoring the whole thing it's like oh let's just get kojima and just sort of sweep him under the rug a little bit leave him there on the ground floor just under the rug and then once metal gears release we'll sort of take up the rug and just sweep him out the front doors bye bye kojima see you later thank you for everything you've done and obviously again this year not only with metal gear solid 5 and kojima leaving but with the silent hill franchise as well which is something people were really getting behind especially after pt which for a, a game demo trailer thing did super super well i think it shocked a lot of people that all of a sudden silent hill was just dropped it, and 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 it, it, it everything to do with it just Again, erased. K- Kojima was part of that. Erased. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, part of that. All very exciting things, and something they could have stand to, you know, to do a lot of money with. Especially uh, once again, Silent Hill, a, a very similar series held in much higher regard, similar to Metal Gear, in that it is one of those. It's one of our classic gaming series, you know, akin to Resident Evil, akin to Final Fantasy, things like that. Uh, you know, and and it's it almost begs the question of what happens now, especially to these big series. What happens 
with Konami. Konami, as we going to assume, is going to do nothing but mobile gaming from now on. I don't think we'll probably get anything big from them in, in forms of console games, in form of PC games. I don't think we'll get anything like that, especially in the West. If anything, it will be mobile games now. And what also happens to Kojima? Now, apparently, since he's left Konami, he's apparently not allowed to work or do anything until, I think, December or after December. Something to do with the contracts and things like that. But what what's he going to do after? I mean, let's be let's be honest. Kojima could walk into any old game gaming uh, company wherever in the world and be like, "So I've got this idea for a game." I don't think he even has to say what the idea for the game is. It could be a table tennis game, and people would throw money at him. People, would, yes, make it, make it for us, make it for us. We'll give you everything you need. Make it for us. So I don't think Kojima's got any problems in 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 doing anything like that. I don't know if he'll be able to... Obviously, he had Kojima Productions, but I, I, I believe that was a, a, a sort of uh, umbrella company under under Konami. So whether he will be able to start his own company like that again and probably draw a lot of people from Konami or people that he's worked with into his company and, and things like that, time will tell. But the bigger question is, obviously, Konami are still probably going to own the rights to games like Silent Hill and Metal Gear. So what happens with those? Is Kojima going to be allowed to do something with that or not? Time will tell. But it's a very interesting, interesting topic, which has, I suppose, been going on for better most part of this year. For the better part of this year, we've it's been Konami, Kojima, what's happening... And I suppose we've got an answer, but we'll probably never get the full answer. But what do you guys think? What do you think is going to happen now with, with the Metal Gear series and, and with Konami and even with Kojima? Let me know in the comments down below. It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts, whether you think that Kojima will be able to continue Metal Gear as a franchise and as a series. Bearing in mind, it, it is his child it's his it's his gaming child which he made but i suppose the rights of it belong to konami so time will tell but anyway our guys i've been rob the under gamer thank you so much for listening and watching and i will catch you next time goodbye mm-hmm.